Hey, hi everyone, welcome back. This is Ramesh from Java Guides. In this video, we are going to develop a web application which has a registration form using GSP server with Hibernate and MySQL database. So in my one of the previous video, uh, I have shown you how to develop a web application which has a registration form using GSP server with JDBC MySQL database. So instead of JDBC, we are going to use a Hibernate in this uh, video tutorial. Alright, so basically we are developing the same web application, but instead of JDBC, we are going to use a Hibernate framework in order to develop a persistent layer or a DAO layer. Alright, so again we are developing the web application using model view controller design pattern. So JSP acts as a web layer and uh, servlets acts as a controller layer and JP entity acts as a model layer. So look at here, this is the screenshot. So it is the web page of user register form. First name, last name, username and password as a fields. So we are going to use a bootstrap CSS framework in order to style our web pages. And this web page is responsive. Uh, again, we are using bootstrap CSS framework to uh, you know create a responsive web pages. So let's have a look into tools and technologies. So we use JSP hibernate 5 plus eclipse id and we use jdk 1.8 later and we use apache tomcat to develop or deploy our web application and we use servlet api and we use mysql connector java jdbc driver in order to connect to the mysql database using jdbc api so next let's have a look into the development steps so i really like this section because it outlines what we are going to implement in this video tutorial so first we need to create a Eclipse dynamic web project then we need to add all the jar dependencies next we create a project structure next we uh, set up the database next we create a jp entity next we create a user DAO class next we create a user controller and then we create a hibernate java-based compilation next we create a register and register success JSP pages and finally we'll see the demo so let's implement these development steps so first step is create a Eclipse dynamic web project. So let's open the Eclipse ID and let's create a, a dynamic web project. So I'm in Eclipse ID and go to the file new and choose dynamic web project and let's name it as a, a registration GSP server Hibernate example. So you can also refer the screenshot at a project structure section i have given a screenshot here so you can use this screenshot to refer the project name and the packaging structure and the the you know the structure for your application so let's refer the screenshot and give the project name as registration gsp so a tabernet example and packaging structure also will implement the same so once you are happy with the project name just hit finish Alright, so next step is we need to add the required dependencies. First, I copied all the required jar dependencies from my local machine and just I will paste in a lib folder here. So don't worry, once this tutorial will complete, I will host the source code of this tutorial on my GitHub repository so that uh, you can download the jar files from there. So next step is we need to create a project structure. So let's go ahead and let's create a packaging structure. So right click on SRC folder new and choose package and just give a package name as net.javaguides.hibernate and let's create a model package first and next create one more package and let's name it as a web package it has the servlets and next let's create one more package DAO so it has all the Hibernate DAO classes. Next, we create a package and let's name it as uh, util. So, this contains a Hibernate uh, Java's compilation. Let me rename it as util. So, great. So, once our project structure is ready, let's have a look at the next step that is uh, you know, creating a database and database tables in uh, MySQL database. So I am in a MySQL workbench. So I am using MySQL workbench to connect to the MySQL server. 
so I just select create a demo database and we create a user table inside a demo database so just type create database and name of the database is demo and just execute it and let's refresh it yeah here we go so demo database is created now let's create a table inside a demo database let me select a demo database here and just execute this detail script I refresh and here we go under table section users table is get created so next step is we need to create a users jp entity so just go to the eclipse again and right click on model package new and choose class name it as a user and let me reuse this code so instead of uh, writing line by line code let me reuse the code so that we can complete this tutorial as soon as possible so let me explain this code so user is a very simple java class it implements a serializable uh, interface so one more important thing here is uh, whenever you create a jp entity you should follow these four rules so first rule is you should have no argument constructor inside a jp entity and you need to provide identifier property that is a primary key and you need to provide a getter setter methods and uh, the class you create it should not be a final class all right so you need to pro uh, follow these four rules whenever you create a jp entity great so look at here the annotations so add entity jp annotation so we use this annotation to annotate or to identify java class as a jp entity and we use add table annotation to uh, declare a table details or provide a table details for example right now we are giving a name for the table that is users and you can also provide a schema name and unique contents by using add table annotation and we are using add id and add uh, generated value annotation to provide a primary key as well as primary key generation strategy so right now we are providing add a primary key generation strategy and we use add column annotation to provide or to map a column name to the member variable of the class for example post name last name username password and look at here we are using we are providing a column name for last name by using add column annotation so pretty simple so let me just uh, go through the these four rules so look at here we are providing no argument constructor so by default compiler will create a no argument constructor if you don't define uh, the default constructor and next step is uh, next rule is we need to create a getter setter methods and uh, next step is we need to provide a primary key that is we have already provided and uh, uh, the uh, the class is not a final class okay so this is the proper jp entity now let's go ahead and let's create a next step so next step is we need to create a user dao class so right click on dao package new and create a class name it as a user dao class and just to use the code So next step is we need to create a hibernate util so on a util package create a class and name it as hibernate util and let me reuse this code so i will going to explain this code okay so let me first uh, explain hibernate util that it contains a hibernate java based configuration so whenever we develop a hibernate application first we need to create a session factory so session factory it provides a factory of session objects and we use session object to interact with the database so for each database there should be a single session factory so for example if you have only one database then you should have only one session factory so look at the configuration here so first we need to create a hibernate configuration class object and next we create a settings 
लाइक वी न्यू टू प्रोवाइड अ जेडी बी सी क्रीडेंशियल्स लाइक ड्राइवर नेम यूजर नेम यू आर एल पासवर्ड एंड हैबर नेट डायलिट एंड वी न्यू टू प्रोवाइड हैबर नेट प्रॉपर्टीज शो एस की आओ डी बी टू डी डी एल एंड फाइनली वी प्रोवाइड ऑल दीज प्रॉपर्टीज टू द कॉम्पिटिशन ऑब्जेक्ट बाई यूजिंग सेट प्रॉपर्टीज मेथड एंड वन मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग हेयर इज वी न्यू टू प्रोवाइड अ जे पी एंटिटी टू द कॉम्फिगेशन ऑब्जेक्ट बाई यूजिंग एड एनोटेटेड क्लास मेथड एंड वी न्यू टू पास दिस सर्विस रजिस्ट्री ऑब्जेक्ट टू द बिल्ड सेशन फैक्ट्री मेथड एंड फाइनली बिल्ड सेशन फैक्ट्री मेथड प्रोवाइड अ सेशन फैक्ट्री ऑब्जेक्ट एंड वी यूज सेशन फैक्ट्री ऑब्जेक्ट टू क्रिएट अ सेशन ऑब्जेक्ट सो दिस इज अ यूजर डाउ क्लास इट हैज अ सेव यूजर मेथड एंड वे पासिंग यूजर ऑब्जेक्ट एज अ पैरामीटर टू सेव यूजर मेथड एंड हियर वी आर यूजिंग ट्राई विथ रिसोर्स स्टेटमेंट टू क्रिएट अ सेशन ऑब्जेक्ट सो फर्स्ट वी गेट अ सेशन फैक्ट्री ऑब्जेक्ट एंड देन वी यूज अ ओपन सेशन मेथड टू क्रिएट अ सेशन ऑब्जेक्ट and then we start the transaction using session object and we perform a uh, database operations within this transaction and once the data operation is completed then we commit the transaction and if there are any exceptions or errors occurred in a try block then that will be caught in a catch block and then transaction will be rolled back all right so pretty simple dao class so next step is uh, we need to create a controller that is the servlet so go to the web package and right click new and just give name as a user controller and let me reuse this code so user controller is a simple servlet which extends a http servlet and notice here we are using at web servlet annotation in order to declare a servlet so we are not using a web deployment descriptor or a web route xml file in order to define or declare a servlet and servlet mappings so just we are using at web servlet annotation to uh, provide a mapping servlet mapping and we are declaring a servlet using at web servlet annotation so here we just create a object of user dao class and we have a do post and do get method here so whenever a user submits the user register form then that will be handled in a do do post method and internally it will invoke a register method here inside a register method we are extracting a request parameters that is first name last name username password using get parameter method and here we are creating a user object and we are setting all the all the fields like first name last name username and password and we are just passing this user object to the save user method of user dao class object so once the user register data will be saved in a, a database table then we the request will be again forward to the register success gsp page it's pretty simple servlet next we need to create a register gsp page so go to the web content folder right click new and uh, choose gsp and give name as a register.gsp page and let me just uh, use this code so look at here we are using a uh, bootstrap min.css file and we are using 4.3.1 version this is the cdn link so you can also download the bootstrap Uh, files from the official bootstrap website and you can keep these files in a project and you can provide the path here all right so this is a very simple uh, html form and look at the action and method here so action in an action attribute we need to provide a servlet url pattern like right now we have slash register and this will be mapped to this servlet okay slash register and look at the method attribute so we are providing a post here because we are submitting the form and we are we are sending the data okay so this is a post name last name username password form fields pretty simple jsp page 
and let's create a register success JSP page right click and give name as register success JSP let me copy this code so uh, this page just uh, we need to display whenever we successfully register a user so that's all uh, we have developed our application so let me uh, explain you the flow so first this user register JSP page will be opened in a browser and user enters the form uh, user basically fill the form uh, like first name last name username and password and uh, once user submit the form then this request will be sent to the controller that is the servlet so look at here slash register is you know uh, servlet url pattern and this mapping is given in a servlet here and this is the http post request so this will be handled in a do post method and internally it will invoke a register method and all the http request parameters will be extracted by using get parameter method and again we create a user object and we pass that user object to the show user method so user uh, object is a jp entity so hibernate will directly persist this jp entity into relational database table in order to deploy just right click run as a run on a server and here you can see hit finish so let's wait for a moment it will take few seconds to deploy this application in a tomcat server and by default the tomcat uh, will run on port 8080 okay great now our application is up and running look at the console here there are no errors so now let me copy this link and go to the browser and paste it in a new tab and just give a gsp name here register.gsp and hit enter yeah here we go so look at the registration form so it looks pretty right because uh, we have used bootstrap css framework all right and we have applied bootstrap css classes like form group form control okay and the button css classes so let me enter the fields uh, first name as ramesh last name as a furthery and username as ramesh furthery and password you can enter any password and hit submit so look at here user successfully register web page is displayed it means that our user register data will be successfully stored in a relational database table let me verify that go to the mysql workbench and under demo database here is a user tables so right click and select rows so here we go the record is inserted so this is how we uh, develop a web application using JSP so let hibernate so if you like this tutorial then subscribe to our youtube channel so that whenever i will publish new videos then you will get uh, uh, you know updated so i will be hosting the source code of this tutorial on github repository so you can clone the source code from there and you can also clone a jar files from there all right thanks for watching i will see you in the next video